Welcome all to the Majesty of Tube Amplification. Now, for those of you who don't know, these things were replaced by transistors in like 1960-something. 50-something? 50, 50. Back to the Future. If Back to the Future has taught me anything, it's that Doc Brown had to build one with tubes because they didn't have transistors invested yet, invented yet. And that was 1955, so yeah. Somewhere between 55 and 85 transistors came into it. Probably before the moon landing. Now, people swear by these because older is better, tubes are slower, tubes are warmer. You'll hear, you just look up, I want to hear tubes, and you'll hear all these fantastic stories about why. So I had to know. I've bought other little cheap tube amps in the past, but none of them have been real tube amps. And this is a real tube amp. It's the Dark Voice 3368E is the indication here but it's usually just called a 336 and like all modern electronics it's got a blue led which we can hate on later uses a small preamp tube and a large main amplifier tube and it is rather large and being me this will not just be a review of this where i go oh wow ooh, no here is the own x1s uh, probably one of the cleanest sounding solid state that's the difference, you tube and solid state. So solid state amplifier. And although this has a DAC built in, I'm bypassing the DAC in this and I'm using this Bifrost multi-bit to do all my DAC work and it's being brought down and split equally between the X1S and the Dark Voice. And then the Dark Voice and the X1S go into these nice, lovely Amazon basic curly Q wires into this bundle that you can't see and then out into an AB box by Sescom, made in America, which made it way more money than it should have been, but I still have it, so I'll use it. And what this means is, I put some headphones on, and I could level the volume here, then switch and level the volume here, so that when I do this, the volume doesn't change, and I could just hear literally the difference between a tube amp and a solid state amp. A very, very good solid state amp versus what people are calling a very, very good tube amp. Now I've done this for days, obviously, before this review, but I'm gonna do it again for you guys. Now, one thing I should mention about solid state is it runs cool, unless you class A like the uh, the monster Burson lichen down there. And uh, this requires me to pull out this infrared thermometer. So we're looking at around 100 to 105 degrees here, these metal bits on top. 97 on the sides, 92. You want me to switch it to I can switch it to Celsius for uh, my European fans. The little tube, the top of the little tube, 199.9 degrees, and the top slash side of the giant tube. Let me see if I can find the really hot bit. Hold on. Where is it? Where are you? Come on. Where are you? There, yeah. 142 my butt yeah you go 296 so roughly 300 degrees now that means you could do this and toast some bread it's basically like having a 100 watt light bulb just sitting there actually the 100 watt light bulb might get hotter point is if you have toddler sized children who like to touch things make sure you don't buy this and just leave it like here because little little timmy's gonna come up and grab that and that'll be the last time Timmy touches any of your shit. So maybe buy this to teach Timmy a lesson. Now, uh, I hooked it up to the kilowatt. The kilowatt's in the wall down there. And it's drawing about 60 watts right now. And this is a combination headphone amplifier and tube pre. So you can hook nothing up to the front of it and just use it as a preamp. And I did that for my monitors for a little while. And I'd be okay with that if I wasn't burning a tube to do it, especially the big tube, you'd have to, I don't know if the pulling the big tube out will let this run as just a pre. Haven't checked. But the point is, using this as a preamp, as a tube preamp, I mean, if you're willing to burn, the, you're willing to cook like this, by all means, but uh, it's 60 watts to sit here doing nothing. I haven't even checked it under load. I doubt it's going to shoot up a lot. Uh, the own here will do the same thing, and it has a built-in DAC, and it's roughly the same price as this. And it doesn't... 
Oh my god, it's 88 degrees, which is actually pretty warm, considering. It might just be radiating off of this. Yeah. Yeah, no. That thing's hot as hell. So, tube sound. What is tube sound? Well, because tubes are this, they're a vacuum with a heated element, they take a second to get to their correct working range where they do their best work. And I can't get into the very, very details of what a tube amp is actually doing differently. All you have to know is it's doing it differently. And you can hear the difference. Finally, I put on a set of headphones and I can do my AV and I could hear this is a solid state and this is different. So, what the hell are you buying one of these for? That's the question. Let's talk about the, the, the buzzwords. Warmer. Warmer sound. Now, you could have a set of headphones and another set of headphones that sounds warmer. And that usually means the mid-range or fuller. The bass maybe comes up. is slower. It's, you know, a big gooey. Pour honey on your music. Pour honey on your music. That'll make it warmer. And this doesn't really fill that in because the bass on this compared to a solid state actually goes down a bit and I'll recheck because I was testing with other solid states and I want to make sure that it wasn't a fluke and I know which one is which because I had to do the volume leveling but should I want to do a blind a b with people here I would just unplug these randomly twist them around and plug them back in and say which one sounds better a or b which this is how you do a blind really dangerous reaching past this by the way to adjust tracks because you know that's that's 300 watts 300 watts 300 degrees sitting by my elbow need a little more uppity song uppity You don't get more uppity than the Made in Italy album. Yeah, okay. So, this is doing now, because tubes are, I want to say, a more physical thing, they're going to vary. You know, your transistors, they throw them on, an, on a multi, on a oscilloscope, check, 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 check. This has to be built by a man who signs it, by the way. With pencils signed up there. So it's going to vary slightly, the heat. If I blew a fan on this, it would change the way it works. If I let it sit in the sun, it would get super hot and change the way it works. And you're getting one of these because you already have one of these. Here, here's the only reason you buy a tube amp. If you have a good solid state and seven headphones and you're bored with your solid state and seven headphones you go out and you say i want to change these seven headphones to sound slightly different and the only way to do that is either you fuck with eqs or you listen to new music or you get a tube amp now this tube amp i'm going to tell you what mine this particular one that i'm listening to which will not be the same as the one you get it'll not be the same even if it's the same model it may not be the same sound but what's going to happen is at least on mine Bass drops out, and the sound stage improves. Now, what does that mean? Well, the bass drops out is easy enough to say. It's probably a good three decibel drop. Just, you know, heavy-duty, hard-hitting bass is now back. And I think the reason for that is because of that sound stage increase. Where you listen to something and it's very focused, very clear, now it's sort of just away. Just a little bit away. And it does open things up. That's why people say, hey, you got HC600s, you got to use a tube. Because the sound stage in these is not spectacular. It's very accurate, but it's not spectacular. And what this tube is trying to do... No. All right. Double checking things. All right, this is solid state. Now I can't touch the volumes here, and that's set max, and that's set max. So I just gotta listen now. Yeah, 
it's moving the sound away from this from the drivers now what the metaphysical properties of the tube doing that are i can't tell you but it's a general consensus that tubes sound different and indeed this tube sounds different does it sound better who the fuck am i to say that that's up to you that's for you guys to decide if this sounds better than this this sounds different than this assuming this is the cleanest amp i've heard and i've got quite a selection to choose from and i'm saying this is the cleanest that's the most powerful and i wouldn't trust it in a pure sense because of the op amp change but of all the headphone amps i've got the own here although not super powerful i'm over i'm almost at half volume just get listenable with these 600s is the cleanest and this being the only tube in the building god it's getting hotter 105 108 i gotta you can't walk out of the room with this thing running and for the love of god if you would like drape something over it or paper landed on it and then you flipped it on you'd start a fire so keep that in mind also uh this is doing a perfect job of amplification and this is doing a different job now i'm not the one to say it's perfect or imperfect it's well no i'm sorry let me say it. it is imperfect because that's what you're paying for you wanted to fuck with things you wanted to take the boring well see here's the thing i don't find this boring i find this accurate and very very pleasing but if you get just this and just this and just this and just that and that and that and that's all you're going to get all these solid state amplifiers are going to be the same Maybe the one with the op amp change. You could you could tweak it a bit. But tubes, they do things. Now, could you fake those things with a DSP that has also this? Sure. I'm pretty sure someone out there could analyze a pure waveform, put it through an amp, measure it, see what changes, then put it through a tube amp and see what changes, and then just make that happen. So why are we dealing with tubes in the first place? If you could just fake tubes. And I'm sure, you, I'm sure... You can fake tubes. You could slow down responses and, and do all sorts of weird things with transients and mess with it. But it's not the same. It's the same reason why people are still spinning vinyl. Vinyl does not sound better, people. Mark the time code, whatever it is in the video. Vinyl does not sound better. Vinyl sounds different because vinyl has mono bass. I, I read it. It blew my mind when I figured out that was the reason. Because in order for a vinyl record to play, it's got left and right stereo needles that ride in a groove. And guess what? If you put a 20 hertz tone on just the left side of a vinyl groove, that would bounce the needle out of the goddamn groove. So everything 150 hertz and below on a, on a record, on a vinyl, is pure mono. And that's one of the reasons they sound different and warmer. Not to mention the fact it's analog and, you know, things are moving and there's scraping involved and things wear out. People like that. So this is pure analog. Just pure analog. The purest. Like it's literally heat is making these headphones move. Let's make them move again. Like, this is, uh, I'm listening to Seven Nation Army postmodern jukebox again. And there's an echo in it. There's an echo in the song. That on the solid state, you hear there is an echo. But on this... Since it's backing up the vocals a bit, they're just stepping back and wider. The echo is more prominent. So it does sound different. And I might want to listen to Postmodern Jukebox exclusively on this dark voice. Which I'm not sure if I'm keeping or giving away. You guys can decide that later. I love it so much. I do love it. I love the fact that it is different. And I could listen to all these headphones that people send me. And I could be like, ooh, now I want to hear that on the tube. Ooh, I want to hear that on the tube. Let's switch headphones for a second. Another thing is I have to be real careful around my desk because I keep swinging things around and there's glass right there. Not cheap glass either. Expensive glass. Switch to a closed set of cans that I trust. Mad dogs. Now, one thing that does change, even though I just had the volume set perfect so that when I switched to switch, these were the same. Now that I switched to something different, This dropped volume probably halfway. 
When you plug, the different impedance of headphones matters way more to a tube than it does to a solid state. The solid state could just, it's just instant. It keeps up. Now that I play this again, Actually, let's raise this up. Hold on. All right. So now it's... There you go. Listen. In general, no notable volume change. I've got it within three decibels. By just adjusting the two now look how high we are on the own we're at three o'clock level and this is barely touching 11 o'clock so this has the power to push just about any headphone on the planet just about i'm not going to say every headphone because someone will chime in and be like no you guy have four watts of channel like, fuck you all right but now the fact that you have to, when you change headphones, modify the volume so much is because of tubes. Because of what these tubes are doing, how they're doing it differently. So let's go back. I'll give you some closed analysis. It almost sounds, it almost sounds, I know there's echo in this song, and I'll change songs to double check everything, but it almost sounds like this is adding a reverb effect. Not a very, it's not very pronounced. I could, this system here, the way this is hooked up with the same source, two amps split evenly, then to this, to, is the only way to AB, you can't listen to a tube amp for six hours and stop and listen to this for six hours. That doesn't fly in my book. The only way to truly AB is to be able to flip a switch and instantly, now you're at solid state, and now you're on a tube. And you can go back and forth every second, 100 seconds in a row and know exactly what's different for every little minutia. So telling you that I hear a slight reverb is because I flipped this and even though the volume is pretty close to identical, there's something more in the tube. Now, that said, there have been some songs in my days of testing this, weeks of testing this actually, where the solid state just had to be used. Songs with really heavy bass that has to really hit you. This three decibel drop in this just, just didn't, didn't cut it. Let's try some dead mouse. Watch my elbow. Another thing, yeah, I know the levels change, but not as huge a difference in the Mad Dogs here as in the 600s. Not even close to the side, to the type of change you hear. Where, oh, it's making the sound stage wider. Barely a difference in closed. Much smaller. Now, I haven't taken these out for a while, and people are begging me to do another review of them because I only brushed over them in a $50 challenge. But uh, here are the Taxstar 2050s. And I've heard they've changed manufacturing and maybe they're not as good anymore. You'll note they still have the stock pads in them because stock pads in these are awesome. They are very small, though, for little people's heads. Little people's heads. And now I'm going to turn these volumes all the way down for this because these are not hard to drive at all. But they are very good open headphones. Don't burn my elbow, please. All right, we're leveled. Probably not a good song. Let me do something that's a little more, uh, whoa.
I will also point out that there is a slight channel imbalance in the tube. Super slight. I'm talking, I had to get out, move wires around. Because, you know, focus point is here and now it's like there. So that's throwing off the uh, AB as well. But that's what you're dealing with with tubes. You're dealing with an imperfect system. You're asking for it. You're paying for it. You're paying a Russian guy to build you tubes. Most tubes are Russian, by the way. I think these are Chinese. Very few are made in America, and the ones that are, or the ones that are made in Japan, are really expensive. You see, because I'm playing postmodern jukebox, which is not a modern, which is recorded really well, but is not considered modern music, I'm not hearing the low end drop out like I was in some of the more modern stuff, the stuff that reaches really low down. And that could very well attribute to most audiophiles who are talking about tubes are playing music like that. They're playing, you know, classy jazz, stuff that reaches low enough but never is just like pounding 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 that they could hear it now to avoid this review going into like 30 minutes i'm just going to speed this up a bit beck beck makes great stuff epro farewell ride that's very loud oh my god now i'm gonna have to lower everything down to rebalance Tube. Yeah. Low end increase. Soundstage narrowing. Narrowing. Not saying that that's wrong. That's the way the soundstage is supposed to be. I believe everything that's coming out of this. I believe it. And this is giving me its own rendition of the damn story. How could that still only be like 105? 109. 301. All right. Things are just getting hot around here. Hot and heavy. So, let's stop playing with headphones. Let's stop playing with the knobs. Let's stop flipping the switches. Let's talk about this in the final thoughts. Here's the thing. You let dust get on this, and then it cooks on. because it's 300 fucking degrees. So you drape a goddamn rag over it. Then you realize if you flipped it on with the rag on it, it's going to burn your house down. So you stop draping a rag over it and it just gets dusty. Um, I guess I could get like a cake cover for it. Do not let this be your only headphone amplifier. That's my only... You can buy it. I, have, I like it. I like it. But guess what? See all those? See all those back there and this and all, all this shit? I have enough correct solid state stuff to authorize me to have a tube amp. Do not be the person who throws all their other stuff away and just has a tube amp. That's dumb. You, this is for different. This is for accurate and this is for different. So you can have different if you have access to accurate. How's that? That gives you all permission. You all want those glowing tubes. Can I shut the lights off? I know you can't see the glowing tubes properly, so. You all want that romantic tube glow and a fucking blue LED. You all want that. And you can have it. As long as you can back that up with solid state for the times when you want to know what the actual headphones sound like. Because if you listen to head, if you judge headphones solely on a, a tube amp, You'd be wrong about how they sound. Not 100% of the time, but I'd say 60% of the time. So, shutting that off, shutting that off. 
and then I'm just I'm just gonna stop now. I just it's just it's dark in here and tubes, man. <laughs>